I'm just solving the problem and figuring out why the hell they're here in the first place. What did I miss? There's got to be something here that they're going after. It has been hella hot here, and they're looking for water. About this time of year, they all tried to charge inside. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, this is, this is where the good stuff is. So today, I'll go through, and I'll, I'll spray wherever they are with some vinegar water or, you know, friggin' a little bit of a little bit of alcohol and bleach water or pepper water or whatever I got, you know. So I don't even really know what I have. I just got home and all of a sudden there's ants all over all this shit. And I've been battling them ever since. So I'll whip up some vinegar water or something and I'll spray like the perimeter and I'll clean everything up really good and we'll see what the hell's going on. I'll cock any cracks and crevices where they might be coming through. I'll focus on all those things, physical barriers as much as possible, but I'm not going to go spraying a bunch of like chemicals and stuff around. I don't like doing that, you know, unless it's an absolute like, fuck, we have to nuclear bomb this whole facility thing. Um, but yeah. So <laughs> when not... they get bad, man, like I have, I had ants like literally take down Su Choi last year. Like I, I, I broke one head off after it started flowering and I've never seen ants rip apart a plant like this before in my life. But they just literally tore it down from top to bottom. Like, bit by bit, by day by day, it was absolutely nuts. I have an ant issue, um, and I always have to fight them. I've been reading about these. You can buy these colonies of, of their, like, zombie ants or something. And they, like, they go around and they, like, steal half the colony or, like, kill the queen and take the colony away or something like that. Like, I thought that would be kind of fun. That, that would be, that'd be, like the war of the ants <laughs> yeah man you know strong will survive you know send send warriors to battle them you know for sure no i always just try to do the uh you know flood them out piss them off create un you know un like bad habitat Hospitable. you know what i mean so best way to go i guess I find I find, find the pine saw is ridiculously from, helpful. They are. I can see how they're getting in, so we'll stop that. That's how there is to it, you know. <laughs> Have you guys tried the boric acid deal, where they take it back to the colony and kill everything? Little borax yeah. mixed you with sugar. Yeah, I've used that before. It works pretty good. Yeah, sometimes like the funny thing is like sometimes it'll work good and sometimes it won't work good and ants go through different phases of what they're eating you know what i mean so sometimes they'll they'll be able to take that and eat it and it'll work pretty good piss them off other times they're not eating that right now and you know it doesn't it doesn't help so if i have it like i said i'm a i'm a man of what is in the back of my truck and what do i have under the sink on hand right now yep. and then i'll come up with something you know sometimes starting point work acids there you know sometimes it's not you know but I have had mixed, mixed, you know, mixed effects. I mean, like people say, diatomaceous earth and weird stuff. But most of the powdered stuff that I put out will get wet pretty quick and doesn't do much good for me in a lot of cases. So, you know, it's like spray it with something that's, you know, kind of gonna mess up their pheromone. Like uh, I hope vinegar would or a bleach would kind of clean up the area and kind of you know confuse them and piss them off to where they don't want to kind of crawl through there. And seal those seal those fuckers off you know i gotta figure that out though that's what i'm doing tonight i guess <clears throat> little peat pellets nice a little bath what are you watering with i thought i'd get them soaking now like right off the bat because i've got to do i got to do 50 cuts during tonight's episode <laughs> hey. oh day. hell no <laughs> <laughs> Between, between, that's why I got Ken to come help out with the camera. Between uh, these and uh, some other stuff that I've been looking through, I need to get a whole bunch cut so I can start testing, testing out stuff and getting into the flower and you know, sex in and, and doing everything. I really like to keep the original moms, like the original plant, as long as possible to take cuttings off of. So I'll take like a really early round and, and get a test <coughs> going and seeing how they go. And I, I find they actually really root pretty, pretty fun quick. Like, especially on these early kicking strong plants, once they get to about this, I bet you we're at what, like eight weeks, maybe I'm not too sure. London, what are you pouring in there? That wasn't straight water, my friend. Yeah, it was black. What was up with that? Uh, I got some humic, 
uh, humic and fulvic in there. Well, actually, just straight humic, actually, in this. But the fulvic's part of the humic molecule, so I guess there would be some fulvic in there as well. Um, a little bit of calcium, uh, like CalMag, and I put a little bit of rooting hormone in there just to kind of give them a little boost. Um, just to get over that 80, like that 60 to 80% success rate and try and get them into the 90s. Sometimes it's hit and miss. So I, I find it like the temperature fluctuates so much here and there. It's, it's kind of a mess. But I try, try and use those and a bunch of labs. I like to put a bunch of fucking labs in there. And I find that that, that helps, you know, prevent bad bacteria from showing up and, and, and causing weird molds and stuff like that. So I like to, I like to put that in there as well. Yeah, man. I like, uh, I, I like using just freaking really clean water nothing in it nobody nothing. saw that but i literally dropped the microphone off of a three-foot shelf and then caught it midair like a fucking ninja <laughs> and, was, and, and, and i'm telling you man we were on camera but like i wasn't on camera so i can't even prove this right now but it was the most sly thing i've ever done in my life that's great that was most people wouldn't was remember the karate kid yeah. reference Danielson. Truly really epic. Man, but I'm excited. These are, these are beautiful fucking plants, Mr. Trees. And they are starting to get really stinky. Like quite, quite, quite odorsome. And that's still in the vegetative stage at this point in time. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm just finishing up, man. All those, uh, the ice cream cake, Kandahars are... They're finishing up. They're coming on the home stretch, man. They're, they're, they're all got... They all got color, like ice cream cake type color you know it's a it's the kandahar red i mean the fade to reds and purples and greens um musty beautiful plants man i'm excited looks like they're gonna hash well you know looks like those heads want to break off it's kind of real sandy to the touch you know on on most of them it's not a greasy kind of resin it's more of a sandy resin when you touch the bottoms of the flowers and kind of rub the fingers together so that's cool um but yeah i'm excited you know I want to taste those bad boys, and I got the they pure stuff going good. this year for the, you know, for the full term season. So we're gonna see the the pure stock in a real full season, you know, ground situation. You know what I mean? Which will be really nice. So I'm excited about that. Going yeah, back to Iowa. Crazy, yeah. So we didn't catch up from Coastal Grown OG last week. We missed you. And and how are you doing and how are the plants growing? Do you wanna do you wanna be our first in depth recap on how your plants are doing? Um for the yeah, night, as, yeah, we, as we missed your definitely. beautiful face. And uh I I'd like to talk about IMO a little bit and the ant thing and how you can um if if I can actually remember to talk about it at the end. Uh about well, how you I'll can organically sure. I could have smoked a lot of weed so far, and I'm going to smoke a lot more weed. I can tell you what. I'm going to remember, and I'm going to make sure you tell me about I know. Well, uh, yeah, I, uh, I've been, I had about three more strokes in the last couple of weeks, so I've been kind of just trying to struggle with that, but I've kept up with them, and this is where we're at right now. Uh, they're looking pretty large. Uh, I'm just waiting to get to the point where I then take some clones off of them and, uh, defoliate the bottoms. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they look perfect. Oh yeah. Uh, they got so big. One of the fans decided to start eating one of the, uh, leaves. But, uh, other than that, it's been perfect. I mean, they look perfectly green. They're very happy. They don't feed very heavy. Uh, they're just happy with water, and um, I think I've only given them like full humix and uh, just box farm uh, soil with soilless mix of uh, the the cocoa, and it it just it just goes. I mean, it, it, these plants are so happy. I just I'm really happy with the way they're turning out. You got any um, smells on them in veg? They got any smells coming off them? You rip off any leaves and get anything funky coming off of them or anything? I'm actually no. so paranoid about touching them, I'm not even doing the stem rub. 
I'm just waiting because I'm so afraid of contaminating them because I just went through uh, killing off all of my mothers uh, due to a, uh, a mite infestation because uh, we let my uh, dog into the house. And it basically contaminated everything. <laughs> Completely violated my entire IMO. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not even touching them. Like I, I like I barely even get near them to water them. This is the closest I've gotten to them in in days because I I won't I won't allow that to happen. So I'm hyper. Um, uh, o, o, uh, what was it? PTSD'd out by the uh, spider mites. <laughs> but um, on the uh, IPM, uh, you were discussing the uh, um, uh, the issues with the ants. Uh, one issue with uh ants and with uh a lot of these insects is they cannot stand, like you mentioned, diatomaceous earth, but also perlite. And what I would do is, uh, I used to on uh, like mother plants and high value plants, is run about an inch, a half inch to an inch of perlite on the top of the container, just enough to where when you water it, it doesn't um, water down, it still stays up top. But what happens is, any thrips that are like living in the ground that want to come up, they die because their exoskeletons get cut. Any thrips that want to go down die because their exoskeletons get cut. And it's the same thing with ants and other mites and everything else. And I found by just using straight up perlite on the top, um, pure perlite, it really worked well. The other thing was defoliating mother plants at least a third of the plant and then painting them white with an acrylic paint, uh, kind of like you see uh, like like cocoa palms in, in the Caribbean, they're always painted like that. So the insects and the, um, uh, and the iguanas don't want to walk up them because for some reason they're like disattracted due to the color. I, I don't know why, but uh, it works. And I had about a good 10, 15 year streak without any mites before I changed over, but that that's, to me, probably um, the best advice I can give for like IPM that's completely organic, not doing anything uh, as far as spraying something. If you want to spray something, citronella, as long as it's not during flowering. Uh, but that's about it. And uh, now I'll shut up. <laughs> yeah, that um, the the white paint on trees and stuff that you see is uh it's actually a, it's a it's a water-based latex type paint that, that allows some breath through there it's not a not a nasty paint or anything like that and it's for sunscreen and you'll only see those in places where it's really really hot you know palm springs arizona nevada texas in some places where they'll actually paint the tree trunks and the bottom halves or they use it a lot of times in avocado culture for when those you know branches are uh you know soft and soft wooded and stuff but a lot of people think that it's for insect control and other things like that. It's not 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 the case at all. For the white paint part, um, it's uh, it might make it a little bit you know funny or you know not not as desirable. But it's it's always for uh, the sunscreen factor, which is really really cool. So if you ever have a tree or an avocado or a tree that's really, really thin leaved and, and has been sick and kind of defoliated heavy and has a lot of its branches exposed and stuff like that. You can go to most nurseries or um, just go to the Home Depot. You can get a water-based latex white paint or a tan paint and you can paint all the, the top sides or the trunk of all those little exposed branches just to buy you some time until you can get those leaves to get up and throw some shade over the, over the, on the canopy over those bark bars. Um, Perlite that's stuff that's hot. That. Yeah, that's that's the first. This is why I love this stuff because it's like that's the first time I've heard it. I always heard like from locals and stuff in the Caribbean the opposite, but you know it's always great to like hit these ideas off other people and see what their opinion is on it because you you never totally. know no, really totally. what's going on. But yeah, like yeah, I was totally. always like, well, it it worked 
for me, but I mean, maybe it was just, you know, it was just a flash in the pan or some sort of like placebo kind of effect. So, yeah, no, whatever. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of the times, you know, like that's, you can get, you can get, you know, you can get mixed results and things uh, on, in that regard, but just like the original reason of why it's like deployed in general and where you'll see it deployed most often is is because of the sunscreen factor and there might be some places i've heard of people um like mixing stuff into the paint like pyrethrins and other things like that where you're actually like putting putting some sort of a killer or a deterrent or discourager in that paint as well for for insect control but yeah it's just a cool thing that like if you're you're in you're in that farm world and you're doing that stuff you're painting those trees for sunscreen you know what i mean you're gotta put some sunscreen on them you know that's it's crazy that bark will peel and crack and they don't heal the same as us, and you got a you got a big problem after that point. You know what I mean in, in certain areas. So um, it's real. It's a real valuable kind of tactic, especially on thin, thin canopy trees. You know, we I always do that for the hundreds of sick trees all the time. You know, like avocados and mangoes are the two like most common ones that I'll do because they have a green, flexible bark. It's not like really woody like other trees. They, they have, you know, when they're young bark, it's just really this green, flexible stuff that gets burned really easy. It's really sensitive. And they need to be a thicker canopy tree so that they can, you know, avoid that sunscreen, you know, avoid that sunburn and stuff like that. So when they get sick, we're, we're always painting those bad boys. And when they're young, out in the, out in the hills, out in Fall Brooks and, you know, the, you know, Riverside and places like that where they're doing a lot of the grove grows. And they're growing them like by the thousand, all the youngsters go through and they get painted. They get painted and you get all this whitewash blast blast all over the leaves because they're just doing it with a backpack sprayer and stuff and just spray them down just to keep them, keep those young ones from burning up. Uh, but the, the perlite thing does, you know, it's, there's some validity to that one that definitely does, you know, harm the, harm that soil surface for those, you know, those soil dwellers, the fungus gnats, some of those thrips, some of the other types of mites and things. They don't like having that, that little layer there. I ran a, a big bed <clears throat> a couple times with a bunch of perlite on the top and a couple of pots with a bunch of perlite on top and did some trials and some tests and stuff. And I did have some success, you know what I mean, keeping some, some numbers down. But my stuff would get so dry that when I would water, it would poof up. And that dust would go up into the air all the time because it was, uh, you know, it was just always sitting on the top. It always have that perlite dust. And as soon as you'd hit it with a little bit of water or whatever, it would poof up. And I, I just, that was one of the reasons why I stopped doing that. But if you got a problem, that definitely can help you for sure. Just like sand, you can use sand the same way. You know, put a layer of sand on the top surface of the soil and uh, smothers things out. Keeps, keeps those soil guys from being able to travel as well, you know, up and down through it. But this is cool stuff. I love farming stuff, man. It's cool. I love talking about it. It's good. So what about uh, a lime wash on the, the trunks for protection, PJ is asking? A what? What kind of wash? A, a lime wash, like lime? Um, I've never I've never used that. I've I've not I've not seen a lot of the lime wash on the trunks. That might uh you know, I don't know. That's something I don't know about. I, I can't speak on that one. But I'll definitely look into that, you know, just, just because you know, something that I haven't heard of um, being used that way. So I'll look into that. I think that's uh, that's interesting with the, the, the pain of white and everybody always assumes that the colors and stuff like that transition or, or do these extra things. I've wondered, like my neighbor sprays all of his trees and all of his all of my neighbor's stuff with this gross smell like like two weeks it just smells like rank ass i don't know what it is what he's putting down with some sort of like heavy duty pesticide on his fig trees and it just absolutely drives me nuts there's got to be better alternatives than yeah. that in my mind uh when it comes down to it so like my question is: So we're do, we're going to try and do some cuts and some clones and and, and see where everything's going there. Um, what what kind of results have you been seeing in the flower tent with the plant? With not in your flower tent? Yeah, you think you have a little bit larger of a space than a flower tent there, Mister Trees? 
Uh, what have you been seeing, kind of, as the end results of some of these these plants, and 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 how have everything been going? What can we look to expect, uh, even at, with rooting times and stuff like that? Have you have you cut taken a lot of cuts of these plants and seen how they root up, or? Yeah, they have a. They actually have pretty good root rooting on the the SFVs and the ice cream cake ones are the only ones that I've taken cuts off of. I haven't taken cuts off the Pam or the Royals or any of those um, at all yet. But uh, the ones I took cut, cuts off of were, you know, average time somewhere like eight to eight to ten, eight to ten, eight to eleven days uh, before roots start popping out of there. Um, no, uh, like like. You know, like Coastal was saying, not a not a huge amount of food has been needed. Not a huge amount of water. Uh, they're one of the last ones to get pissed at me. I'll let them get a little pissed at me sometimes. You know what I mean? And they'll be a little bit thirsty sometimes. You know, push it a little bit. And they're they're one definitely um, both both sides, like the SFV side and then the ice cream cake side. They're a little bit a little bit more uh, more forgiving on that for me, uh, which I have noticed. Um, the there's no like the the biggest thing i've been looking looking at is different smell you know features and stuff i'm seeing how much if any sweetness is in there um haven't found any anything that's been sweet yet it's all been like real real dark notes uh maybe some spicy notes here and there you know kind of splashed in there um but real funky dark musty body odory spicy kind of there's almost some cinnamon or something in, in a couple of those ice cream cakes that i've smelled um uh, but mostly dark notes and then like bug pressure like the the biggest issues that i have ever is is thrips it's one of those things that i'm i'm you know i have if, if i let my guard down thrips will come back real quick you know what i mean they're 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 easy and they're not bothering they're not gonna kill my plants but they make <clears throat> They make pictures look ugly and you know plants aren't the happiest when they're when they're getting their butts kicked so um i tried to just stay on the thrip issue there but some of the ones that i just i flowered up and like i said before is i'll i'll throw things in flower and i'll get them going to where they got two weeks left to go and then i'll throw them outside and uh they, they get to see the sun they get to sleep under the moon this time of year the light cycles close enough to where they were at it's not going to freak them out too much and they can kind of finish finish out their their days there uh weather's perfect for them out there so some of them because of where we are like um some of the other things that i've thrown out there not the kandahar stuff uh thrips have popped up pretty quick and picked on some of them older clones you know a couple of like the you know the mac clone the royal clone a couple of things in the thrips it's, are, it's, it's like they were there it's super interesting you say that I have uh -huh. I, I I've been having some thrip problems lately, <laughs> and I'm loving this this point of conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, they're fun. They're they're it's not it's not hard and it's easy. You just got to stay on top of it. You know what I mean? Rove beetles has been one of my things that every couple of years I'll order a batch of you know a real big batch of rove beetles and I'll re I did, I did re aureus the time. space. I, I did some that? aureus. I released some aureus. Some some pirate no. bugs. Pirate bugs. No, no. I've only yeah. ever done, you know, uh, a few. I, I don't do any of the predatory mites or any of those things like that. The only thing that I've ever done, like, regularly that I that I feel like I believe in, you know, is the road beetle. And, you know, they hang out in the soil there. They take care of a lot of different things in the soil zone. Um, I don't want a lot of mites and other things. And, you know, I just, I, I don't do ladybugs usually. I don't do anything, anything like that. It's, it's road beetles in the soil. And then I'm spraying, like, you know, different oils, there's sulfurs, there's soaps. I kind of rotate through, you know, a few different things throughout the, the months to just keep everybody on their toes and, you know, keep everything on a, on a regular good IPM schedule and everything, you know, everything stays happy and good. But if you let your guard down, the thrips will tell you here and that's the thing that's what i mean so the, the older ones when i threw them out there boom it was like thrips were on them the other ones they didn't get they didn't get it picked on as bad you know what i mean which is nice they you know there's 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 like three of them or so that i can't see any damage at all they look perfect you know they're still still hanging in there and they're right in the mix mix out there anyway so um they're tough you can kind of tell that there's some durability in there there's musty tones in there, funky, darker tones in there. 
uh, good resin sandy content. I noticed the sandiness, like I was saying before, you, you kind of touch them, you get a little bit more sand on the, on the rub on the fingertips. Um, but nothing like, like extremely different or noticeable in, in like clone time or flower time or anything like that. They're all kind of been like, you know, right in line with that, with, with the average stuff um there but like so, resin so are we content, talking like longer than 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 63 days or shorter than 63 days or like right around 63 days yeah right around there you know um i'd say like probably 63 to 70 right around in there so in, in anywhere to kind of pick your pick your rightness the one you're liking you know what i'm saying somewhere in that realm right there um Maybe even a little bit faster, maybe 61, I'd say 61 to 68, right around there, so, somewhere in there. I haven't gone all the way to 70 or anything, but I don't do a lot of counting exactly, so it could be a day or two off here or there. So, But I wouldn't say, yeah, no 80 days or anything like that, kind of right in, right in the wheelhouse, you know? Look at this beautiful, even branching, man. Like, look at It's like perfect. Okay, boom, what boom, seed boom. is that, Layton? Or Leighton, sorry, London. Isn't that really nice? That's gorgeous. This is one of the longer leaf phenotypes, and it's got it's got that spice that you were mentioning before. It's got kind it's, of a little, spice, but with a little bit of spice. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it's very nice. It's not the most stinky of stinkiest. It's at about eight weeks, and I'm starting to see what. Like very early pre-flower showing up. Uh, to, it's still way too early, a, a bit too early to tell, but I might have a boy here. But it's, I'm not going to make a definitive decision at this point in time. We'll check it later on. And if I find a boy, that's that's, that's perfectly good with me too. Heck yeah, no, that looks nice. Is that the taller ones? Are they how tall are on average? Are they about the same size? Or are they are there any differences in height? Sorry, did you say is there much differences in the height? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between. You know, if if you if I, I think you can see them, can you? If I bring that one over here, so you can see them. The the two behind it are actually on a, a about twelve inches lower because they're not on a block. Um, so they're, they're actually very consistent in height. They've all been topped twice. Um, I found like, I, I just, I like to give them the second top and I, I find that it really like after that first node reappears, I find it really helps push those lower nodes out so that you can get a few more cuttings a little bit earlier. You know, you get those, get, get some, a little bit more viability out of them, um, by that double hard top on the, uh, on the top bar, but they've been really consistent. Like, look at this size of the leaf on this. Yeah, that looks good. It looks good and happy, you know? Yeah. Good shape on it. Thick stock. You're too high. You got to bring her down a little bit lower. There you go. Yeah, there you go. It's nice. Definitely nice. I'm pretty happy with the with the branching on this plant too. I think it's really nice. It's got like a. It's not like this is definitely not the stinkiest of the plants. I'll tell you what. There's other ones that have a lot more kick to it, but it's subtle. And these things can change, you know, a lot later on. I find mm -hmm. that 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 sometimes you go into flower and it's actually the complete opposite of what was you were expecting to happen. It's just like okay, well that's that's fucked up. <laughs> But usually I find the stinkier plants do it, but the, most of them are very, very stinky. How many <clears throat> how many cuts are you gonna think you're gonna be able to get off of those that one right there? I'll probably get eight to ten each, somewhere in there. Uh, it, oh, it, right it's on. hard to say exactly. Yeah, Some of them I'll probably them, get okay. a couple more. Hmm? Yeah, you're gonna hack them down. That's good. I got you. Yeah, hack them down to pretty much the top double double hard thing. I like. I love it when you have 
it's stupid. I know some people probably hate it, um, but I love it when you have that kind of a shape of plant when it's like it's like got the microphone stand on the base, and then you have that you see that main high high ranching. So I love it when mothers. Because when you're working a mum and you're trying to maintain it all the time, I, I fucking my back. I have a terrible fucking back. And if it can be a little bit more tall and like of just focus there, even if I lose like a month or two of taking clones, I only run eight max at a time. So when I'm doing mixed hunt runs, it's not a big issue to throw in like two, 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 two and uh, of e uh, two cuttings of each. And so I, I, I have plenty left over. So it's not really a big concern, but... I find that it's it's a pretty good route around. That way, I don't have to bend over so far. So I wanted to show you my plants. I'm going to go grab a couple out of the dock tent to see what they look like because I wanted to show you the contrast and the difference between them. You know, but give me two seconds. Awesome. What what what's everybody smoking on while we have a moment to wait for Corey to get back here? What are you smoking on coastal coastal grown? Unfortunately, it's runt. <laughs> it's I didn't grow it. It's someone else's stuff. I went through. <laughs> I I I harvested about a half pound and went through it in a month, like a month ago. So I I have to like yeah rely on someone else's shit, but. I hate GSC anything, and yeah, I'm just smoking some runs today. I'm smoking some, uh, what is this? This is some dog walker. So, yeah, that's mostly dog walker. I think there's some Pam F3 nugs that are in this jar in here somewhere. I grabbed a couple jar. I grabbed the dog walker jar and grabbed a couple extra nugs, and Threw a couple things in there and, you know, got, you know, mostly dog walker. And since I don't smoke, I'm only uh, popping, uh, um, you know, some sour diesel edibles. So, can't join you guys smoking. Sorry. Sour tea edibles. That's cool. Save it for the 420. I have been enjoying some not seeded weed because I've been smoking seeded weed for two weeks now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, like you get over comedy, you're like, you have like a, few, a bunch of great runs. You know, you're really killing it. You get, you're, you're always up four jars every run that you do. You know, things are going right. But you, so you, you're definitely consuming a lot. Like we're, me and my wife consume like a full packed, full Mason liter jar like a week. Like we we go we go through a lot we go through a fair but we thank you thank you I, we take pride <laughs> we take a lot of pride but anyways when the consumption is just a little bit higher than what your original plan would be and then you have a run where you run for seed and then the run before that doesn't go so well and then it's like oh shit well now I'm gonna start saving my roaches on my last jar yep. <laughs> so it's nice to it, I've got some stuff that just came down some lemon kush headband you know threes. Um, that I love, 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 um, and it's it's it's. I think it's going to be the best round of it I've grown so far. So I'm very excited about that. This is looking beautiful, Corey. Tell me what's up. Okay, so they're pretty droopy because they've been in a dark tent. But yeah, they're sleeping. Anyways, this is a Kendahar by SFB, and topped once, and it looks great in my opinion. Here's another one, topped once. Huh. Way different leaves uh -huh. on it. And I think I'm seeing that, and this leaf looks bizarre to me. I don't, out of all the leaves, they all look really good. This one's kind of got a weird claw to it. I don't know if it's, you know what I mean? The lower ones. I'm not sure what that's all about. But yeah, I mean, these leaves are, these are really, like, Longer, thinner. These are much thicker. They're even like thicker to touch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're more of a leathery leaf. Yeah, it's a. I have stuff. Really, that's nice. Yeah, 
it's a really nice plant, really. And and so I've got two that are tall like that, and I've got three that are more similar to the short guy here. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't know if, you know, this might be male, female, or I, you know, who knows at this point. But yeah, they're kind of kind of different, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like it. I like how they I like how they're showing differences. And then I've got just to just to show you, I've got this was the uh, one of the royals. Oh, right on. And kind of same it right in between the two, really, you know, um, it's got the bigger leave bigger than, you know, say that one, but not quite as thick as that. That, More that, royal, on it. that leaf structure, like it reminds me of like the first time I tried to draw a weed leaf and I felt like I overextended the two middle set. You know what I mean? Like it's really like yep. that perfect consistency of like a nicely drawn leaf like that. That's really it's a really nice, they, they're just, they're great plants. I mean, every single one of them is fantastic. I'm super excited about them. And, that, you know, that, I had, I had a little bit of a uh, slowdown at the beginning. Like I said, I, you know, my room conditions weren't great and la, 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 la. But no, I mean, they rebounded and yeah, absolutely. Like, aren't looking back at all. Yeah, that's radical. That's cool. So yeah, I don't SF. know. Let's take a sniff. I'll go. Yeah, I'm listening to you, but I'm gonna try no, to see if I SF, get a smell. That SFV is really tall and branchy and lanky, like that one there. And then you know that those Kandahars, like its parents, looked a lot more like that shorty right there. Okay. So that's okay. That's interesting. You got an inter you got a, you got an even spread. I got a lot more tall ones. In that yeah, one it's, than, it's, uh, I can. Uh, Give me one second. I'll go get the other couple and I'll show you what I mean. Hang on. Corey, what kind of temp? Oh, I'll we'll wait for him to come back. But I was going to ask him what type I of temp. I can hear you. I got you. Because I'm running a lot lower probably than him. I was kissing I was kissing 11 for a few days, for a little while there at night. Um, and I was uh, had a couple of days where I ran an average 18. So it's, it's caused, I think, a little bit more stretchiness in my plant. Um, I think in that main, main, main bar. All right, so you guys hear me? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right, so let me move these guys out of the way here. And like I say, they're, they're still they're acting a little droopy because they're supposed to be sleeping. But so again, this one's not super tall in comparison to this one. Height wise, but again, I wish I could had better lighting. Yeah, the no, leaves. Yeah. You know, yeah. you've got one that's got these type of leaves, and then one similar to this. But just beautiful, beautiful plants. You know, I mean, one top. That, that plant's gorgeous. Great. Yeah, it looks great. You know, I can't be, and here's, here's the other royal. You know, I can't, I can't be happier with these plants. They're gorgeous. I, I'm not quite ready to make clones on mine yet. Just my style. Um, you know, I'm probably another week or two out. But, you know, I, I think I'm probably going to just clone for sex and then, you know, cull and, and repot and go from there. It's probably yeah. what my plan is going to be. But yeah, no, I mean, I'm super excited. These plants are out of control, out of control. And, and, and I'm so excited about the variation in them. I'm hoping that we're not looking at male, female, and I got, you know, a couple of females of each variation, you know? Yeah, no, yeah, you you definitely, it wouldn't be male and female split up like that. So you, you'll get some females of those tallies for sure. Yeah, that's going to be cool. Um, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> So oh, cool. I wanted to say something about uh, Corey's plants. I am seeing the exact same damn thing with mine. I, I think I can probably get it in uh, here. You can see that same kind of leaf uh, malformation right here. Where are we at? It's uh, 
it's 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 got that deformation with it um and and i'm also seeing differences in terms of um the rest of the uh, the growth patterns in terms of the, the height some of them are really really fast and uh they want to have really nice large flush big leaves and there are some that look like they are uh stunted for life uh there is one that literally has a train wreck size leaf. If you ever run like Arcata train wreck, it's got the tiniest little, like they look like indica leaves, but they're tiny. And that's the closest I could say to what it looks like is, is that. Uh, and then there are some that just, I, I don't know, they, they just, they, they're just kind of going off, but I, I'm throwing them somewhere else. So I can't put them on the camera right now. Cause I'd have to go walk down the street, but, um, it's it's crazy how 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 different all these uh, these uh, phenos are, are showing up. And not and to cut you I'm, off, I have to ask you a question before I forget. Are you noticing that the tall ones are consuming more water? Yes. Me too. Okay, good. Mr. Trees, yeah. you get that? <laughs> yep. The, the the I guess the ones that look like the SFBs on my end and his two both are consuming more water. For sure. And a little bit more nutrient. Just a bit. But, I, I, uh, I had a hard time when I scorched them coming back, but now that I've got it under control, they're kind of, yeah, they're all, you know, staying, staying together. But, yes, I think if I were to turn heavy lighting on them, they'd, they'd be quick to quick to bleach. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. If you want to overdrive the lighting, and then it just, it, it just pushes them too hard. It's kind of like forcing someone to run for too long. Uh, I, I've tried to do that sometimes and it, yeah, it, like it, it'll just kill them. I'm surprised at how little lighting I'm using right here is actually keeping them happy. But if uh, a 30 watt LED is actually working, I'm just going to do it for now until I uh, put them under an uh, HDS and then go from there. But my, uh, I have no idea how these things are so, these are, these are some really, really, really nice vegetation. As far as vegetation goes, they are very nice plants. I don't know how the hell they fucking uh, are just so uh, strong and resilient, but they really are uh, a, a great crop to work with. Would you consider that hybrid vigor? I mean, is that is that what you would consider that, Mr. Trees? Well, uh, like hybrid vigor would be like all plants are extra vigorous, you know, in all kind of cases. So they're they're growing at rapid pace and structurally sound and healthful and you know just kind of ripping and, and kicking fucking ass. You know what I mean? Um, putting along and stuff like that, or you know, slow clone times stuff. Somebody like that is not, that is not for qualifying, you know, for for a hybrid hybrid vigor. Um, but some of those lines, like the the Royal, the the Pam, uh, are all like pretty solid. Like the Royal was bred for multi generations to be what it was by Mandelbrot. That's his exact plant. You know what I mean? So that cross to that P1, that generational plant over there, that's 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 as close to a, a true F1 as you're gonna get. You know, so those should be pretty darn vigorous um, and nice plants, healthful, strong not not picked on by bugs all that goes into like hybrid vigor you know kind of in my in my book you know um and i'm not growing as many of the the royals this year as i'd like so i'm relying on you and a couple other people around town to to grow those royals so, i wish i had more than two i I'm got my excited. fingers crossed <laughs> yeah i'm excited to see what, what what's pulled outside this year you know how that really works because that's really where you're going to see stuff like that where it's like wow you know what i mean this thing is you know open up your eyes a little bit so what are you doing over there uh london how are you coming along you said you were doing like 50 clones today yeah, I got to do 50. Whether I get them done during the show or throughout the evening, I will get them done regardless. The work has to be done. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. 
You know how it is. Been, oh yeah. Do you? Um, I've you been know. saying that for the last few days, and I haven't gotten off my ass to do the same thing. <laughs> Does anybody uh, like miss down their their plants, their their mother plants, like miss down the area, like with a squirt bottle or anything before you take clones or anything? Before you take them? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's one of that's one of my little my Talk little rituals, me. one of my little tricks. You know what I mean? Just plain water? Yeah, just some clean, you know, clean, you know, whatever, what's, whatever your, what's the your theory? Kind of water source is, huh? What's the theory? Um, you're you're gonna so if it's a more humid environment, if you're cutting things, so like in commercial greenhouses and stuff like that, like they're they keep the, the greenhouses really, really friggin' humid, you know what I mean? And doing propagation and stuff in, in a more humid environment, you have more success, less stress on the plant. Um, so I try to create more of a humid environment and actually get those those plants sprayed down on the cells so they can have something to kind of drink right away you know what i mean before i snip them because i, I so don't you're like setting them up ahead of time yeah so i'm, I'm kind gotcha. of missing them ahead of time and then before they go in they get their you know the domes and all that stuff get taken care of and all that but just overall all the mother stock and all that stuff anybody who's getting kind of cloned or cloned on or cut on i'll always give them a little bath a little little misting beforehand and uh you know it really does there is there's is some there's some science behind that so you know give that give that a shot see if, see if it works for I'll you take whatever sure. edge I can get for sure hey man yeah I have to agree with that I I do all my clones and I've never bothered to spritz with water but that sounds like a really good idea to do that yeah for sure for sure and you can look into like different propagation techniques and like you know how how the big, you know, like industry does it in, in different crops and stuff like that. And it's really kind of cool. You can steal all kinds of funny little things you can kind of bring home and, you know, apply it to the life, you know, but that's one of those things that, you know, I, I've been doing that for years and, you know, I, I, I swear your clones should look good. You know, you shouldn't be throwing out clones or you should be having to give them away because it looks so good. You know what I mean? It shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't cannibalize. Uh, but my two big tricks is, miss the plants before you take the cuts and then put your clones in lower light. So like whatever you, you don't want to put them directly under a light, you know, even if it's a less powerful light or a really small light, you know, you I even set them off into the corner and, and just a real indirect lower bright light just to keep them, you know, you don't want them to grow. You want them to, to, to root and do their thing. So lower light, they cannibalize less. And then by misting them, you have better success of them not going into shock and and they'll root better you know so those two things are are big for me in, on taking clones okay i gotta hop in for a second okay oh go go ahead coastal clone. go for you go for it first what he's saying is a hundred percent correct to simplify it for everyone the plants need to not grow so fast so when they're basically trying to root you don't want them to photos like go through photosynthesis so quickly that they're eating up all the nutrients every and all the sugars that are the residual sugars in in that cutting otherwise they will die off they'll yellow really fast and so what he's saying is completely true um but that's the simple way of putting it. Uh, and i just wanted to like point that out yeah because that's completely right uh, I agree with that. I screwed up a ton of clones by putting them under way too much light before, and it, this is just a game of learning, like, by messing up. So, um, I just want to throw that in there. It, if I could say, too, like, it, it, you, you'd be surprised at how many people coach and teach and or, or you read in books about, like, you need 24 hours of lights on clones, and you need a light on it, and you need a separate setup for it, and you need all this crap for it. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard from like big facilities being like, "Oh, I, why do I keep getting yellowing on my clones?" And it's just like, well, your plant is like, it, it, apart from aeroponic facilities, your plant's fucking photosynthesizing, it's using its energy up to grow, and it's not taking in any nutrients, so it has to do something with it. And I, I've been like, I've 
I, I, I went through this phase where I was like being hyper taking care of my plants when it came to cloning. And then I started like giving less of a shit. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't mean to say that in like a way, like I actually give less of a shit, but more like I like, I, I, I got to the point of like, you know, who cares if, if you fail, who cares? If, and every single time it got better. And, and it was that relaxed moment. It was that stopping stressing about them, them, them coming through and having the success to let them be in a little bit. Like I just use a window that doesn't have direct sunlight ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's never direct sunlight. It's right by our window. It's just off the drive. So my kitchen window, my wife fucking drives her nuts, but it works. And that's where they go. And it, you know, I do well. Um, and, and they turn out pretty fucking good. You'll see one flop and then you get rid of that. And it, it happens. It's part of the game. Um, but I, I like that using looking at large industry and looking at other industries and how can I utilize their tools and their methodologies like to, to better suit myself? Because not I mean, fucking corporate people suck, but they don't. But not everything they do is sucky. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's some good ideas come out of some some really dick people. Um, I've met a lot of really amazing chefs that are just terrible human beings. Um, and th that's my point of reference for it. So I find that there's like a really keen level to like, you know, whether or not you should listen to somebody. But I think you should listen to everybody and just try and steal whatever you can out of them. <laughs> if it's useful information, use it. Um, but that being said, I, I brought that point up because I'm actually using something kind of similar, but I've adapted it to be a little bit more our methodology and more regenerative, right? So I start with a wash of, of really basic just soap, really basic dish soap and, and um, hydrogen peroxide, two dip of water, and then labs and like a, a heavy, heavy, a heavy, heavy dose of labs with a little bit of fulvic um, acid and that's it and just throw them in a puck and, and let them go. And I, I find that that even if I have a bug issue, even if I have a mold issue, even if I have, a, if I have some sort of problem going on, a it cleans them, B it leaves them with a healthy, a healthy bacterial biome that will allow them to outpopulate or, or at least challenge whatever might come our, come, come, come this way with my no fuck approach with my no give a shit. Approach. <laughs> but yeah, it was, London done. I got to keep cutting clones. This is fucking exhausting. Why did I commit to doing this? This is fucking brutal. Because you're Canadian and you like to help, and now you're in trouble for doing it. <laughs> so what are you guys using? Like London's using peat pucks. I heard somebody somebody mention air cloning or water cloning. I do it all. I do it all, all the way down to throwing... <laughs> Some in a jaw sometimes on the windowsill. I, I I I do whatever whatever I you know if I'm if I'm cleaning up a plant and I have something that looks decent that I want to keep I'll I'll throw it in some dirt I'll throw it you know but mostly aero clone if I'm doing a like a batch like if I'm gonna sit down and do a whole bunch of clones I'm gonna try to probably aero clone but you know I'll, I'll use anything it, won't, it doesn't really matter to me. That doesn't mean I have success 100% or, you know, so it, dirt's probably my least successful, <laughs> but it's my go-to if I'm in a hurry or, you know, a quick jar, I'll throw something in a jar of water or something or whatever to get around to it later. But yeah, aero clone for, for big projects. So uh, how about uh, you there, Coastal? I can clone in anything. Um, I, if I'm doing like, I agree with Corey as far as like for commercial I operations. That I want you to clone in, and two of them belong to your wife. <laughs> I'm just. That was, I'll, that I'll tell you how many things I've cloned in. I'll give you a whole list of different things. So, um, the typical uh, water like DWC, like little mini DWC cloning. I think that is probably the optimal one to use, especially because you can then. Take those ones, use them in soil, soilless, or uh, in a hydro media. Uh, but I think cocoa core, to totally fine. Uh, soil, totally fine. I think the uh, the key is to keep the containers as small as possible uh, and pre-saturate the media uh, and make sure that it has a certain humidity cap on 
the clone. And I think that's it. But, like, Coco Core, I've even done stuff in straight Perlite. Uh, I've done stuff in straight Hydraton. Uh, you, you can do stuff in straight Sand. It, 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 you can do like, clones and darn near anything. Um, it's, it's really, really easy. It, it, it really does go back to that just not trying kind of thing. You just keep it as simple as possible. And um, as long as you adhere to the ideas and the principles uh, of, like, keeping that, like, the hydration level for the plant, you know, where it needs to be so it doesn't let go, then you're fine. And that sometimes comes down to, like, making sure that the leaves are maybe cut down a little bit so that there aren't as many stomata letting go uh, of as much water. Um, or it could just be making sure there's a dome or just making sure it's spring. But uh, that's about how I look at propagation. Mr. Trees, how are you working on that? I'm... Uh... Man, I've been doing this a long time. I, I clone everything um, a million different ways. So, like, I've bounced back and forth over the years to, like, every different method you can, you know, think of under the fucking sun. Um, from water cloners to domes to, to like, root riot cubes, rock wool to soil. I mean, there's, the list goes on and on and on. But... These days, um, I rarely have a plant die. I can pretty much take clones off of most plants and get, get, them, to, get them to go and get them always to go. Um, the way that I, if, if it's an important plant, something that I, I want to take seriously and make sure I'm taking cuts of stuff, like and making sure that I have my good library taken care of and all those things, I'll, most nine times out of 10, I'll get, get a bag of Root Riot cubes and I use some root riot cubes and clean water, um, bottled water, RO water, clean water, and that's it. Um, so you're not adding anything to the I'll water use, uh, at all. Yeah, sometimes I'll use like a you know a clone X if it's if it's you know there. Sometimes I'll use a a rooting powder. Sometimes I'll use uh, a dip and grow, which is a natural acidic acid. It's like old, you know, it's just like like old school nursery stuff. Uh, sometimes I'll use nothing. Uh, about 50-50, I'll use. I like to make clones like half, half of like if I'm making ten clones of something, I'll make five of them with a with a rooting hormone if I got it, and I'll make five of them without. And you know if I can get nice good ones without, then I'll use those ones for certain things, and I'll use the other ones for other things. You know what I mean? It's like it doesn't really matter. I really don't care. I just try to use less of it it's not like a healthful thing or anything like that it's just like i would rather just not have to use any rooting hormone if i don't have to so if i can look at some plants and root them without it not get them used to it not have to need it then i don't want to use it but you always gotta yeah, have some clone stronger plants like right from the outset you're what was that plant strong you're making the plant stronger right from the outset by not giving it the additions and if it survives it's a strong plant go for it if it doesn't get rid of it right yeah, and that, I mean, that, that goes to show. And then, you know, that's why you want to do some with rooting hormone because maybe that plant fucking is, just has a shitty root system but throws the fire. So if you got a backup plan, so I'm, I'm Mr. Backup Plans, right? So I always <laughs> I like to have lots of things in different forms so that I know that I have my, my ass covered, you know? Um, but if I'm doing it, I'm throwing them in root riot cubes, clean water, in a dome, in low light. So if I have, like, racks... Where I do my clones, it's like a, just a, you know a rack with different shelves. Uh, on the top is is a light. It's not a powerful light. It's like a LED light from friggin' you know Home Depot or whatever. I don't even know how many watts it is, but it's a low LED friggin' light, and it's up top high. And I can throw racks under here, kind of staggered, so that they can all catch a little bit of that light. And the lower I go, the darker it gets. But all of them root, and the lower the ones the lower on the shelf they are usually the better the clones they are always uh, compared to the ones that are at the very top you know what i mean they're just a weird thing um but they're always pretty good and i always say your clones should look good so they should look you know like good healthy plants when they're done you got roots sticking on they should look nice and standing 
I don't, I don't like the, well, I shouldn't say I don't like, I, I, um, I think that you should use the type of cloning method, um, for you to like match the type of growing style that you're in. So if you're in like an aquaponic system or like a hydroponic system, uh, something like that, like the, the aero cloner is a great, a great cloner to use because you're already forming those, those water roots. Um, if you are going to be growing in soil or, you know, more traditional and things like that, I think that doing them in cubes or like, uh, soil or something like that is the best way to go because they're going to grow those proper aerobic soil type roots. Mm -hmm. And if you grow them in, if you do clones in a water cloner and you go to transplant them into soil, you always have that, that pissed off day or two, right? Where the plants just piss for a day. Um, and I don't like that. I like to plant my clones and make sure that they're still fucking praying from, from moment one to moment one, right? I don't like any of that stuff. And I find that if I just do it with, you know, with that in mind, the, I have no, no stress when I'm transplanting anything out. Sometimes in that clone dome, if I've sprung for extra money or I've got like, you know, a project or it's in the back of my truck, I'll throw a little bit of perlite in my tray. So I'll get perlite in my, in my clone tray. I'll put a little layer of perlite or vermiculite, whatever I have in the bottom of the tray, just like a little quarter inch. And then I'll set my little, my little clone cube holder thing on top of that. And then I'll put all my, my cubes on top of that. So when the roots grow through the cubes, if I was gone or I didn't check them or whatever, they'll grow into that perlite or into that vermiculite and they don't get pissed off or have any issues. You can have, you know, that's just something that I'll do if I'm really, you know, if I'm riding high in the back of my trucks full of stuff, you know what I mean? But you don't need, you don't need any of that. So, but I do, I always do a dome. I don't do any of the, the water roots anymore. Um, and I try to keep it as goddamn simple as I can. I don't like to, you know, overthink it, but clean water. Whenever I added a bunch of shit or like made teas or use fucking aloe or did all these friggin' things to my plants, like I always got funky things happening, you know, and I wouldn't get as good a results. And some of those stems would rot and it just wouldn't, just wouldn't be, you know, what it is today. You know what I mean? So um, I keep it really clean. I use clean water and it's, yeah, it's normally pretty bang on, you know, can always give away a clone or two that I don't need, you know, just nice. Yeah. It's always nice to have extra that you can give away to your buddies. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. My old man, he always is like taking down his tent, putting back up his tent and he's like, God, I need a clone or two, you know, this is like, I always am like giving him a clone or two of this and that, you know, cause it's like, yeah, he's, he wants to, he wants to be regular, but he just can't, he can't stay regular to do it, you know, and it always ends up hurting him. So I'm almost, I'm always like, I got your back. You know, it's always it's cool. It's funny. All right on, right on. Yeah, I know. I, I actually built my own air cloner, uh, 15 minutes on, 15 minutes off <laughs> of a, a 35 gallon tote. And I do 23 at a time. And I've generally 100% uh, perfection. I put in like uh, about eight gallons of water. My pump's in there. It never heats up the water so much that I'm cooking my roots. And I'm like uh, um, London. I put labs in with the water. Make sure I'm killing any bad bacteria. And I have wonderful clones coming out. There you go. That's a beautiful thing, man, about gardening, you know, like. And my, my my old man always says, you know, the best tool in the toolbox is the one that works for you, that you know how to use. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. it could be different from everybody, you know? It's just, you know, it's that's the coolest thing about plants, too. It's, we can all get to that place, you know? Well, yeah, exactly. Like, I used the five-gallon bucket. I learned about it, cloning the air cloning from doing tomato plants. Nothing to do with cannabis. And they were just made a five-gallon bucket cloner with, like, three holes. And they were golden. Nope. Nope. Yeah, tomatoes are cool. You run them in really high humidity, those things will start spitting roots all up along the all up along the main stems. You know what I mean? You'll start getting all these yeah. little root nodules start coming off there in real high humidity. You can, you know, you can make cuts. I wish out of them cannabis that way. was that way, right? You know, if yeah, cannabis totally, was that way. Totally. <laughs> 
Totally. So how are you doing over there in London? Uh, you getting close to your 50 there, buddy? Uh, yeah, I'm about halfway. I, I wanted to say, and we're halfway through the episode, the usual one, one to two hour one. I wanted to say, I feel like fucking Mr. Trees rock, walks through like his yard, and instead of like patches where people usually leave bare grass because they're heavy asses, dig it up with their shitty boots, um, leaves patches of grass. You know, like, like fucking <laughs> Mr. Tree's just like, oh, yeah, I'll just take that clone and throw it over here and it just turn into a whole plant. It was like I, I gave my dad, like, for his birthday, a little weed bar. I like, I like, got like five of my favorite ones that I have grown. And like, I had some awesome stuff at the time and I like set it up and I got a bunch of cuttings and put them in in the room with him like like as a decoration for the table like like in a little vase just just whatever right fucking lo and behold i go up there and it's it's a garage with zero lights like not even like sun doesn't even go through the windows like the best thing they have is a, is a tv set in there and i go in there like a month later and the fucking thing's got like huge roots like it's rooted it's it's grown it's like I had a tray of the exact same plant downstairs dead because it got hit by the sun one fucking day. It was like, how does this, like, it was it was heartbreaking. It was really, it was very, very frustrating. It's like, fuck you. And it's like, and then and then you see me pouring all this black goo into my tray and Mr. Tree's like, no, you use plain water. Don't fucking put shit in there. <laughs> like, no, you're fucking doing it all wrong. Um, as, as typical, as typical. But I want it like, I think it's really interesting because everybody kind of finds their way and their methodology and what it is. And it always goes in this weird path as it goes like, oh, let's overcomplicate things. Let's simplify things to like a moderate extreme where it's just like, OK, I'll use cloning Dell and a little bit of humic acid, you know, like I'll just use these two little things and that, that works. And then it's like a, three years later, it's like, well, I just use water now. You know, I don't even I don't even bother. You know, like, you know, I tried honey once. It was like, fuck that water. And it's just like I, I love that progression and how how that taste goes. And I think I think it it almost needs to happen, right? Like you need to develop the methodology and the mistakes and those things. And and when you're new and you're managing temperatures and you're trying to find the right spot to go, a little bit of hormone gel might be a little bit helpful, you know, in the long run when it comes down to it. It might not be necessary. But it could be helpful. And then you get these people that like they put a plant down in four days and it's like they have a fucking like four foot root system. It's just like, fuck you. Like, fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. Nothing in life comes easy to me. I always have to work really hard for some fucking reason. I can go back to cloning my plants like a jackass. Yeah, there's all kinds of little things like when I'm cutting clones and stuff that, that I, I'll throw away pieces of clones that they're perfectly good, but because they sat out too long or if the if i'm cutting certain stems and they they got a little bit of hollowness to the stem i don't like air getting up there so you know that's one of the reasons why i missed them really good beforehand to try to make sure that they're as they're as humid as possible but if i cut them and i let them sit on the table or whatever and i get air up in in the in the in the stem that's going to lower my percentage a little bit in my mind. So I'll cut them, try to throw them directly into some water if I'm going to travel around and cut a bunch of them or keep them as moist as I can. Um, it's not the end of the world. And, you will you know, you just, you're just you just lowering little percents, you know, as you go along. You know, you make certain cuts. You, I don't spray them down. That lowers my percentage just a little bit. You know, I do that. It lowers it just another 1% or whatever. And, it, and those little things kind of just stack up and add up over time. And, man, I just... You have to go through, like you're saying, you have to go through all those little progressions. And Albert Einstein, one of my favorite sayings that I always say that my boy Albert Einstein used to say is like the source of true knowledge is experience, right? You have to, you have to like, that's the only way, you know, you have to, you have to experience it. You cannot be told, you cannot read the book. You, you have to see it and feel it to know it, you know, you have to do Gotta it. Gotta get burned. Yeah. Sure. It, 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 I, I, um, fuck, I lost it. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I got it. So I'm on, I'm, I'm doing number three right now. Um, and that was the fattest, sausagiest leaf of the, of the plant. And if you can, 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 can you grab the camera for me there? I'm going to up the, up the height. Let me know when I've got the good angle. I think it's right there. Yep. But this was the fat, super chubby leaf one. 
that in comparison, like I can even pull one off of one of these. Where's the where's the where's the extreme opposite? There you go. Not extreme opposite. They're not that opposite, but you can see kind of that fatness. Like that's got some separation in. See that that's like you can see that right there really nicely. And it's just like this fat overlaid thick chunky leaf. I wish my lighting was a little bit better. Um, but like it's quite a bit. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. It's de definitely height. different. It's still it's still similar height, very similar height. You know, they get a lot of light because it got south facing here, and I have LEDs on top of them. Um, so they get a lot of light. One thing that I did notice on the previous plant that I wanted to point out a little bit ago was this, and I don't see this. I see it once in a while. I don't see it really, 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 really often. Um, but I do see it sometimes. And if you can see kind of, I don't know if you can see it super well. Maybe I can bring it a little bit closer. And if you can see right there, see the, so I did the double top, right? And then I did the double top. But when once I did that secondary top, this shoot kind of came out as an extracurricular one. And I've seen that kind of bunching happen before, but it's not very super common. So do you see a lot of a little bit of that mutation here and there? Or is that is that very common at all? Or I don't know. I, I'm also like like I massage my plants and look at them all day long. Like you guys are like, oh I spray labs once a month. I'm like, I'm gonna spray labs on you every day and give you a light coating of love. <laughs> Fuck. I have seen that over the years. I mean, I've seen that a couple different times, you know, with, you know, with cannabis, with other things other than cannabis, funny things like that. Um, but I haven't seen it in any of these lines. And I, the ones that I ran, most of them, you saw that, that ICC that I was showing the other day. I mean, I was straight up. I didn't top that at all. So I didn't give it the opportunity to do any of that funny stuff to me. Um, but also like a lot of cookie genetics, you know, have those funky little mutations in there, you know, and, and, and weird branching coming out from different places. And uh, I've seen them a lot of different cuts with similar, you know, lineage in there that, that do that more, more often than others. I've seen that more often with that lineage than others. So I don't know. Well, it's interesting. We'll see what that, what, what that, you know, if it peters out or if it rolls through or what happens with it, you know, but I didn't see any, I didn't give them a chance to do that for the most part. I had an odd one with a webbed node. It looks like not not any of these plants, but it looked like where the the you know where right where the V was. It was a web, almost like a leaf, looked like spanning the two. It was weird. Uh, I, I'm kind of lost with you guys because I've only ever grown the sour diesel, so I don't know much about any other plant than the sour diesel. And it could that's have been good, something though, that man. I did Where's wrong. Sour diesel. That's, that's me, hard to I'm grow one plant all the time and just learn one thing. It's really, a, it's it's badass to be able to do that. Be like, I grow this and I know it like a mo. You know, like there's nothing, yeah. you know, that's cool. Yeah, you know the smell, you know how she looks, you know, you walk in the room and you can see there's something wrong with that plant because it doesn't look right. But you got to ha grow year after cycle after cycle after cycle to get that way when we do the tastings ken i'll have to like figure out which cut you would probably like the most and because you're just around me so i'll just like send you the cuts so you could just grow sure. that. <laughs> <laughs> which would be good. that way you could try these ones out as well i've always got a variety to grow as well but um i just cut, started cutting this plant and we are at number of the set the last one that I need to make cuts of today. This was number one plant, funny enough. Um, and I started cutting off the the stems and, and and immediately got like a heavy, heavy aroma of pine, which was really cool. I thought that was like almost like pine and lemon, like something very like the other plants. They have some great aromas, but this one was like like when you cut the plant open is when it release that kind of aroma which is really cool have you seen that <coughs> there we go 
All right, there we go. My screen got funny. Um, it's cool you say that because one of my favorite, the, the way that I selected Pam 15 and, and kind of found her out of the group um, when she was young was when I was trimming up the plants, I pulled off a fan leaf, a big old, big old freaking fan leaf off of this thing I smell. And that's one of the things that I do is I break off one of the big kind of mid, in the mid section of the, of the plant, one of the main features, a good solid, heavy fed leaf, you know, I'll break it off and I'll smell the, the chlorophyll, the blood of the plant, you know, I'll, I'll really smell it. Sometimes I'll taste it, see if it's a different color um, and notice anything like that. But when you broke off the, the fan leaf on Pan 15, when she was a baby, um, you immediately had this crazy, like, this this spicy zesty like you opened a bag of like doritos chips of some sort like a really powerful like salsa verde was like this really powerful smell um really pungent really kind of really sour and and pungent smell and it was only when you broke the leaf and, and and opened up the plant and actually smelled the 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 tissue of the plant um so i always keep lookouts for plants that that, that do that and then when i flowered out pam she's gonna be that 15 i put a little tag on her and she went through the line and we looked at a bunch of different stuff and it turned out that you now that was the one that i that i liked from you know in the end and all those things it was one of those things that was like wow you would, just rubbing it it wasn't the same it was when you off and of a really healthy one that was healthy and and full of life you know you'd be like whoa and it was super pungent and it wouldn't last very long it was like a fart in the wind you know what i mean it was like it's like there immediately it dissipated. It was like it, it was know? like a flash in the pan, like it's yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Still to this day, I always do. That's one of the things I love doing with 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 that plant, you know, because it's special when when you get to do that. You know, it's really interesting. It's not a lot of plants do that, you know. And there's some plants, you know, Bodhi has some plants, the Dragon Blood line that you do that and it bleeds red. It, that that blood is not green; it's red. Uh, which is really interesting, you know. That's really cool. Uh, I always thought that was a cool feature. So, um, you know, I always take note of stuff like that. So that's cool you say that because yeah, it's only when you bust open into the plant a little bit and get one of those those nice little leaves or cut a main point, you know, that it'll that it'll tell you. So have you found that coastal where you snapped a, a stem? You've had that kind of a, a scent come out of her. Oh yeah, uh, back in the uh, early to late 2000s, I uh, did uh, maybe, I can't count too well, a few thousand uh, Mexicans, and uh, I found all sorts of crazy stuff, and we found like red and purple, uh, basically sap on the, uh, the plant. Um, you also found like things like you you could find the like Ohakan and the uh, Acapulco Gold fucking uh, finos, and then a lot of Afghan was mixed into it. It was a lot of dirty, muddied up stuff. Um, but uh, occasionally you could get that kind of stuff, and then you could get some like root beer finos too. Um, but yeah, I ran through about three thousand of them, and. Uh, I found a few. It was it was very rare, but I did find a few with like red to purple uh, sap in them. There really wasn't much difference in the potency or anything with the plant. It was just a nice, cool thing. But um, you know, it 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 was it, it was a thing. the The best plant I found was actually what looked like the precursor to the Cali O, which was a uh, old school uh mexican uh sativa uh that was orange flavored that never stops flowering like you literally have to harvest part of the plant uh before it finishes because it will literally rot it'll because it'll just keep going 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 um but yeah that that was the precursor to the original calio and i had found that and that was probably the best thing i had found out of all of it but uh yeah, uh, I, I, as far as the resin, uh, or I guess the, the um, sap goes, it, yeah, it, it it is something that's common. 
you can find that. Um, it's 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 a neat thing, but I'm not sure if it's related to anything potency related. Though. How about you, Corey? Um, you're talking about smelling veg, I guess. Uh, I smell things in veg. I don't have any correlation to what they mean because I haven't really. I mean, I can't put a smell and veg together with something in flour. I mean, truthfully, I have a hard time, you know, distinguishing different smells that I get in flour. I mean, you know, I can, I can tell sweet versus sour and things like that. But as far as pinpointing it down, you know, I can smell berries and things like that in flour, but, but uh, like doing that stem rub just now, I could smell like it smelled like, Mr. Trees was describing maybe a uh, uh, spicy or, you know, some kind of a smell like that. But to say cinnamon or I, I really am not good. Or, or I've heard Mean Gene say dill pickle or maybe or something like that. I, I smell different things. Sometimes I just smell plant. Sometimes, like you say, when I'm cutting clones, I'll get a whiff of something and I'm like looking around where it's coming from. And, it, you know, it's it's obviously coming from what I just clipped. So, um as far as being descript and, and, and chasing something, I, I think that I can definitely say if I smell that smell, I'll be able to trace it and follow it around. Uh, but I, I'm not able to distinguish it from one smell from the next. I, I, unfortunately, I wish I was better at it. So Mr. Trees, um, have you noticed when you're getting the different odors that you're getting a different profile on the plant at all? Or is that something that you've really looked at at all? There's no, uh, there's nothing that I've ever smelled that like ends up the way that it is, you know, in the end. Uh, when it actually starts to flower and all those things happen, it changes so rapidly. Uh, but when they're in vegetative state, and they have an above average scent compared to this to the other stock around it. I always take notice of those, and I find a way to you know put a mark on them or um, note them in some way so that as they go to the end of the line, they might turn out to be good. They might they might turn out to be nothing. And more times than not, the stinkiest plants in in veg sometimes aren't the best ones you know what i mean it's it's the more reserved ones that were slower to go the ones you had the least amount of expectation for that you took the least amount of clones of the the one that <laughs> is always usually the one that i get screwed with it, it turns out to be the the winner but sometimes like in that in the pam 15 case when i when i marked it i was like wow what the fuck is that i had never smelled it like that before i smelled lots of things and sometimes they smell you know, like just like a plant and Sometimes they get a little bit of this and you can tell that it's just a, you know, it's nothing special. But when you really get one that's got something funky to it and you're like, whoa, that's that really be there. You know what I mean? In a weird way, you know, that's like, I'm, you know, I, I like noting those and then seeing what happens in the end um, with them. But like she changes, the, the 15 changes so much from like what that smell is. To what it really is you know it's like completely different smell um by a lot uh if you were like to compare the smells you know to each other you know but it told me to kind of keep that eye out on it you know what i mean it's, it had a little something extra kind of to it you know oh i thought london you were grabbing a microphone you're grabbing the bong rip no no i'll i'll hop on <laughs> Oh, about it. I've, I've managed to cut most of the cuts that are necessary for the evening anyway. So I can take a little bit of a breather. I got some stuff from the cutting folk line that I got to do some cuts from. So, which is actually really neat. They got some really like lemon, lemony leaning phenos, which has been really fun. Some hollow stem stuff. I was thinking it'd be kind of cool, like, if you could get a really consistently hollow stem plant to make straws out of them. I think it ought to be something cool for like a gastro bar or something funky like that. That would be cool, man. That's right, right, like, yeah, that's actually. really cool. Yeah, or, or, yeah, or you know, nutrient deprive it or something to get there or something like that. A growth, growth practice that'd be cool. It's a good idea. It's interesting. Be the straw, the hemp straw guy that just throws them naturally. You don't have to do much processing. A couple clips. I just there, throw you know? my straws. I bet you, but you <laughs> could then 
dip them. And then you could just dip them, right? Like you could dip them in a resin or something like that so that they would not die or rot away. And then they do something similar with bamboo. Um, Dude, I have, kind of I have like giant stocks right here. I mean, you can see this, right? Can you see this? Like <laughs> this thing, like, yeah, man, I mean, that's, that's a real deal. I have, I have big hands, you know? Um, you know, this thing is, I feel like one camera. day, I can't, some... I can't even get you to the top of it. There's another three feet of this kind of going. Um, but that's been around since fuck, what year is that? 2014 or 2015, right? Something like that was when I grew that plant right there. And I was going to make this into a mic stand and do all kinds of rock and roll stuff with it. And I just never got around to doing it, but this thing is still perfect as it ever was and if it was a little bunch of little straws i bet you they'd be just fine without dipping them in anything you know what i mean if you store them in a dry climate you know wet in canada you might have a problem but yeah well, that's it's only in bc go. in alberta it's dry here we don't have to worry about that moisture you know it's so oh, dry good, your good. skin falls off it's so fucking there dry that's how go. dry it go. is good. in alberta fuck, then you'll fuck be good this is what that's that's Fuck your That's whole years or some shit, you know, some, you know, you know, almost a decade. This thing's been around like that, and it's and it's just as badass as it ever was, you know. I I hope one day you chase some guy that that like that's tried to betroth your daughter or something like that, you know, like, you just like like taking some dude out like with a fucking giant stick of weed, like I I would be okay if if I got beaten up with it with like. So, uh, yeah, that's too uh, much of an honorable son. death. You know what I mean? No, that's some. That's that's the way you take your buddy out. You know what I mean? Who can't? You know, he's, <laughs> his last days, and he needs to go out on his own terms. You know, you take him out with a weed spear. You know, but no, I have a, I have this uh, electric pruner. It's called the Felco, eight twenty. So anybody wants to Google that, it'll blow your mind. It's called the Felco eight twenty, and it's this backpack, handheld, pruner like this. That can hack through friggin' branches that are like two, two inches, three inches. It'll cut for twenty four hours. I'll have to just. Push it's like a jaw of life or something. Yeah, it's it's fucking badass, dude. It's it's <laughs> it, it's it's so badass. It's not even funny, right? Um, and I, if I ever had a daughter, I don't have one, but I always joke that I'd sit him down in the garage and I'd pull up the like these crazy gnarly logs, and I would just turn that thing on and just start hacking the logs into pieces like with little buttons, you know what I mean? On the logs and just talk to him about, you know, how I had to take care of, you know, take care of my daughter properly. You know what I mean? Because that thing with the push of a button, I could take off all of my fingers. You know what I mean? Just an accident. They would be gone. There's no stopping it. You know what I mean? It just would take it off. So you put somebody's junk in there or a toe or something like that. That's, that's, that's a problem for anybody. You know what I mean? So um, that was always my joke. Like, luckily I don't have a daughter, so I'm good. You know? We're talking old school now. Take your take something <laughs> off, you know. Hey, <laughs> you don't want to. I think you can that, use you know, the same to tool if anybody stuff. tries to slay your wife too. I think you can you can use the same tool. You can use the same, same tool, <laughs> same methodology. What do you? So it's spring. You've got some projects coming up. I bet. Are there some exciting things happening in the world of Mister Trees right now? Um, I, I've seen some epic photos, like some mango stuff. Um, yeah, and, man. And some um, things like that. I'm trying to get like more of uh, my market garden thing going on here. So I've been working really hard every night. And tonight I'll even go out and throw the headlamp on and work for a couple hours out there. Um, getting all the all these different beds ready. So, you know, just basically like. You got a little plot of land, you, you know, dig it up, till it up like a badass, and then get some logs from around your area, or your firewood, or a couple of old fence boards or whatever, and you make yourself a little, just kind of make yourself a little bed, and then dump some compost and some stuff, and, you know, worm castings, and kind of till it up a few times, and water it a few times, and then been planting them out. And some of them, you know, I, you know, you put together little bean tunnels, they call them bean tunnels, so trellises where beans and shit hang down you know and tomatoes and shit hang down over the top of it and you can pick them i've been doing a lot of tunnels like that and i've been getting you know the the home grow a little bed ready to roll and i'm thinking about um doing like a 
a show kind of like this, you know, with you guys, like grow a, you know, like grow a giant with Mr. Trees, you know, all through the season. So planting and planting, planting the plant the way that I do it, you know, and in the earth and the bed, do one plant and, you know, grow it big and beautiful and badass and show you all the things that I do to it and see what we get in the end. You know what I mean? Like, and do a check-in thing with it, something like that. I don't know if anybody want to watch something like that, but I've been thinking about maybe maybe dedicating a little bed to a to a, a show, you know. So um, I think that, that been cool working my a lot of my worms. What was that? I, I said I think that would be totally cool uh, myself. Yep, I'm in. I yeah, definitely right. watch it. A hundred percent. Right on. Nice, nice. Yeah, I'm gonna. You know, I've been thinking about doing that. So that's something that. I mean, thought into and i got a little place that i think i might dedicate for it you know we'll see uh, we'll see if i get you know see if i can get it get it going on that'd be pretty cool i've been working hard on the on the worm beds i'm trying to to launch uh a, you know my my worm side of my business you know what i mean because I, I i grow trees i sell trees and we we do orchard stuff i farm worms uh, everybody always wants to buy my worm elixirs and my stuff that I use on on their trees. Making a lot more of that stuff. There's a couple things right here I've been shaking up, making all kinds of little things that I've been. I got to use out in the garden later. Um, another one, you know. And they just sit here. They don't they don't separate or anything, you know, which is friggin' awesome. It means they're really really rich and your humix and your your fulvix and your stuff like that, where it's it's just kind of water soluble, man. It just sits and it's beautiful. Um, really cool i've been making these worm casting balls that are like aged from three year casting beds that i have you know i have some that are like three years old you know two years old one years old a few months old and some are fed different things to change the nutrient value but they're all fed with hundreds of fruits and vegetables from my farm out here so like all the weird fruits the avocados the you know, the berries, the peaches, the melons, all the shit that we don't eat goes in the friggin' worm bed. And they eat that and multiply like sons of bitches. And, you know, are I we going to be able to buy some vermicompost? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want I want to start finding a way. I'm going to I'm going to send some of the, the worm, my, my special worm balls with the super crazy casting balls to Peter. We're going to send those because they're not heavy, you know, and you can ship that. But shipping big heavy bags of shit it's gonna be like yeah that's that's gonna be way down the line um for shipping purposes but there's gonna be different ways that i'm gonna try to infiltrate I'm gonna ship worms I want special worms you know from the farm and you know the elixir and all kinds of other stuff i'm trying to find different ways to get get those to the farmers markets and to the people you know what i mean because this right here i mean literally every day i leave i never leave home without this stuff you know, I'll make it right when I got it out of, out of like, the, the best fucking castings you've ever seen. And I'll put up a post after this of the stuff that I've been putting in that. You know, it's just crazy. It's hell. It's, it's insane. Um, little little does everybody know, Mr. Trees is actually 800 years old, and he bathes in it daily. And that's how he's managed to stay looking so fucking young. Yeah, the worm elixir. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the elixir of the worm. The latest elixir. Yep. Not. But that's that's my secret sauce, man. That's one of my favorite things that I do that I use that I've been working hard on making better organization on the worm farm and then on the real farm growing carrots and friggin' pumpkins and cool shit like that, you know, which is cool. The other one. So is that what? leachate, or, or are you actually uh, like taking the the castings and putting them in water and and stripping out the humic and follicle that way? Uh, both, uh, both of those are in this these ones that I made right there. Um, so I have like there'll be a a mature bed, right? Call it a matured bed, a bed that's been per properly worked for you know a year by worms. And they've turned all that good stuff into like pure castings as the driven, you know, earth, right? Uh, so I'll take those and I'll take like an avocado or a melon or something like that, and I'll put that half of one of those on the surface of the of the castings and take out everything else. 
And then within a couple of days, all or the majority of the worms will be up inside that melon or those avocados. And then I can just take them out of the bed and put them in a, in a holding zone for a little bit. And then I can take water and flood out that bed really, really well and let all that leachy leachate stuff and all the fucking worm goods come through and that first that first batch of stuff the first couple batches of stuff will come through and i'll collect it in the big buckets and those go right out on the on the trees they're they're a little bit thinner they're not as like potent and rich um and then as it as it really starts getting in down in there it really starts getting dark dark black and really beautiful looking and uh, i start filling up the jugs with that and we use that and then i mix that with real castings, really high quality castings, just the hand, like it's, I call them casting balls and I'll roll up a, you know, it's like a ping pong ball of the friggin' chronic castings and I'll stuff that in one of those jugs and, you know, I'll shake that puppy up and you kind of got the best of both worlds, like right there. Um, Sometimes I'll take that leap, depending on how old or how mature the bed is. If it's not, you know, at least a year old, if it's younger than that or, even a year old bed, I still, um, would like to cut that with more water just to be, you know, like cut that 50, 50 as it came out into the jug I'd probably fill it up halfway with water. And then I'd take my casting ball and I'd throw it in there and then I'd shake it up and, and do it that way. But the older, the, the more refined, the more rich, it's like you have the more potent, good, crazy stuff that you could mix down, you know, friggin' 500 to, to one or, really and still get some kick-ass benefit out of it you know it's, it's amazing how you know it'll just change the water and just have stuff that the plant loves and they stand up like nobody's business all the time you know what i mean they're just happy to have it and you can tell you know so um yeah it's just cool it's just something that I, i've been doing for years man that i've just been doing and people keep asking me can i buy some of your stuff so i've been making some stuff up and giving it to them and Leaving Everybody it here and dropping call. it on doorsteps and stuff, trying to get it, get it to people. But it'd be nice to get some castings out, you know, and start bagging some stuff up and have some local stuff here where you guys can come drive to the farm and pick them up, you know. I love, I love, I, it's, I got a great yard and I got a lot of worms in it. And every, yeah. every few days I can go outside and, and just pick worm castings up off my my yard it's like it looks like this scale of them it's every single time it's epic (laughs) it's absolutely epic i've been trying to figure out how to get how to get a small population of worms to survive in a three gallon pot with a a weed plant in it a big one but we're we're having challenges with dry off so we got to start figuring that off a little bit but I, I think once you get to a critical size of weed plant, you run out of room for the worms. So I think it's like yeah. the challenge that I'm running into right now. But anyways, aside from that, I really had a, a question for you. You say market gardens. Or you, are there some particular, what are like your, your go-to money vegetables? You know, like what are the what are the things that like make you money and keep you not working so hard when it comes to market garden vegetables? I'm a huge fan of carrots because it's like fucking done. You know, like, and they're always they're like you. You get carefully these once in a while, and you spray them. You know, it's dealt with you pretty quick. Um, like, is there is there anything in particular that you really enjoy? Or yeah, like- man, you're right on. You're right on with carrots. You know, I love doing carrots. Carrots are bitching, dude. You can do all kinds of them. You can do the round ones, the colorful ones, the short ones, the long ones. Friggin', it's it's. They're cool, and we use them a lot. So it's something that I actually will eat here. My kids eat. Everybody eats. So I always have, like, two or three giant beds of carrots, like, you know, 10 by by 8s or 20 by 5s or whatever, beds full of friggin' carrots because those are super important. Um, They sell pretty darn good. They're one of the the things that will sell, especially the cool, colorful ones. Um... I like doing root crops too because, you know, potatoes and turmeric, garlic, stuff like that. Um, I like doing root crops, number one, because they sell pretty good. And number two, you get less bug damage and issues with them. You know what I mean? Because they're under the ground. Stuff you sell is under the ground. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
You know, you're not getting like, you don't have to sell them like lettuce leaves or something that has like, you know, snail damage or holes in this one. And you're not having to clean it all up and worry about all that shenanigans. You know what I mean? Or tomatoes that are getting. And, the, and they're like, not like susceptible, or, like, like fucking, uh, they're not susceptible, like, um, turnips or anything, you know, like flash burn radishes, you know, like there's, they, they, can, they can get eaten up and drilled into pretty bad. Yep. Yeah. You know, carrots can. will find are a little bit more resilient. Yep, you get some earwigs and some pill, you know, some pill bugs, you know, roly polies. You get a couple of slugs in there, you know, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? So you I have a huge those population of, of roly poly. But huge. radishes yeah. and stuff are are good money makers, like good French purple ones and stuff, because they grow pretty quick. They're like super quick crop. You can get them as long as you can protect them for a little bit. You know, you're you're pretty good, um, and you can kind of turn them around pretty darn good, and and, and they're neat. Not enough people eat radishes, but. Corn. I grow lots of different corn. Popping corn, flower corn. I have that um, black radish, corn. the French one, or the the Hungarian black radish. I forget exactly where it's from. Is is is? I have that black oh, right radish on, yeah. in in my cover crop brand. I th- I love it because you get like you get to the end of your round, and the plant's been in there for you know three four months, and you have a little radish. So it's like oh yeah. harvest snack on my radish. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. You know. Um. But yeah, carrots are one of my big ones. Uh, passion fruit. That's one of the weird things that you wouldn't, you don't think about, but I got passion fruit vines that kind of cover my whole, they're, they're my wall of my, of, around my whole house. And they, they just, you know, we got tons of passion fruit and you wouldn't think, but people love passion fruit and they're really good for you. So that's one of the things that, that will go pretty good. Um, what else is fun that, that we do? Sugar cane. Um, I've been doing a lot of funky, like, you know, I've been. I need to get a sugar cane juicer, a sugar cane press, man. Anybody want to make a trade? You got a sugar cane press that you know, just an old one where you roll a sugar cane, you cut it in half and roll it through the thing, just kind of a hand, little crank, little cold press or something uh, for sugar cane. I want to get one of those to make more sugar cane juice. That would be badass. Um, but uh, you know, cutting the sugar cane up into clones and then popping those up and selling sugar cane as a plant—that's one of the things really? that people love. love to Interesting. Buy it, which is cool. Like, what's the yeah. temperature? Like, I've never even seen sugar cane in the grocery store. Like, not grocery store. What the fuck? At the plant store here. I I, I imagine that it's like it's like a fuck no zone. Is this, this is my guess? Um, <laughs> <laughs> is there like is it is that what it is? Is it like because I mean, dude, it is so tough, man. I mean, it is it. Like you wouldn't think about it. You think that sugar cane is like this tr- this tropical thing on on islands and can you know? But like honestly. It's one of the things that I water the least. I cared for it, you know, less than everything else. Uh, never dies. Just keeps multiplying. It's like one. Of the, it's like a friggin' weed. Once I planted it, it just multiplies, and you can't get rid of it. And that's the, what the lady told me because it's a, it's a particular type of sugar cane. It's, it's delicious. It's got killer sugar. It's it's beautiful. Uh, it's from um, somewhere like I mean I think she said Trinidad or something. She was from Trinidad, if that memory serves, or something like that um or somewhere thereabouts somewhere one of those one of those places and she said she she had it from there and she she brought it here and it's a complete weed and she said wherever i plant it you know expected to take take that place and, and kind of take over and i didn't you know i didn't expect that to be 100 percent the way it was because i was like oh sugar cane's you know exotic but man it's a weed it's like this big grassy bamboo thing it grows awesome um yeah if it gets you know, if you're getting snow on the ground, I don't, I don't think you're gonna have any success. You know, growing it without some sort of protection or cover, it can die down and come up from the root points. You don't need very much of it at all. One or two buds will activate and grow really, really easy. It's like easy cloning plant, uh, low, low care. It gets, it likes to get little aphids and stuff, but you can blast all that crap off with water. And commercially, they spray them with all kinds of crap. I don't know what the deal is, but. It's a really easy plant um, to grow. So, but I found it's like unusual. It's useful as hell. You can do all kinds with sugar cane. If you grew some sugar cane, you can like make fuel out of it. You can juice it. It's really nutritious, like coconut water and stuff like that. It's um, it's tough. Doesn't take a lot of resources to grow. You know, I mean, I, I, I like I said, I, it's sit it's sat in a place at my house that like hardly ever got water. It wasn't loved. It was like I just planted it there, and it was one of the spaces that didn't have water to it. You know, and I was like, oh, I'll get water to that eventually. And it 
freaking kicks ass. So now I get the water. It's got water now and it grows really well, but it lasted a long time without water and any help, you know, so it's earned a spot for sure here. But it's an unusual one. But you can do it if you got a greenhouse. You pull it inside, you know what I mean, some way. It really needs I, to be in the I ground. I think I could so probably pull it off. I think I could probably pull it off. But I mean, if you're I've creative, got... I'm sure, dude, that there's a yeah. way to do it, you know, because it's it's not that. You know. it's, I mean, I've got, really... like, I've got stevia. This is kind of my funnest, newest plant is stevia. I've got, like, a, yeah. a little a stevia doing pretty good here that's... that's you get 24 seeds for five bucks. It's like it's almost as expensive as weed. It's got to be like the most expensive fucking vegetable or herb seed. I, actually, no, there was one. There was a, there's some tomato and pepper seeds that are like fuck you expensive. Um, nothing like nothing too crazy, but like you know, not like weed. Not like when not like some of these people charging like you know three hundred dollars for a pack of ten. You know, like I, I, yeah. I get it. But. Yeah. This one was this one was epic because it's just like I had to plant all the seeds and I only got like three plants out of it, but they're delicious and it's like such an awesome snack. And it's kind of, yeah, it's so sweet. You don't got to do anything to those. Those were what's so cool about the stevia is you just pull off the leaves and it's just sweet and tasty. You know, it's better than when it's processed. You know for sure. It's a good it's one. Way, way different. The way I like way better Moringa, than I was expecting. That's the other one. That's the other one that I grow a lot of that, that people like that is worthy, that is easy, that I love. I wouldn't do anything without it, you know. I put that in compost. I give that to the worms. I eat that. It's the bomb. That's a cool tree, you know. If you can grow moringa trees, grow moringa trees. They're, they're how, how big do they grow? Dude, they can I'm get crafty. big. Um, you can keep them real small. You just prune the shit out of them and eat them. You know what I mean? Like prune them down, keep them small, eat, eat them, keep them small. You'll keep them stunted. But I mean, I've seen them with, you know, a trunk this big that stood 15, you know, 20 feet tall, maybe somewhere in there, you know, somewhere, yeah, somewhere in that realm. Um, and that was the biggest one that I've ever seen here. Um, I've seen pictures of them with bigger trunks, but usually their heads are, or people are eating the leaves and stuff like that. And it keeps them, keeps them smaller. And usually at a young age, they were used for stuff. So you, you hack them down so they branch out lower. You can kind of just use them like a, you know, a salad type crop. It's a, it's a freaking tree, but it's the most powerful leaves you can friggin' eat, man. They're, they're delicious and the bomb. So. That's one that I've I got like. a fuck kind of try holy do. basil that I got to figure out something to do with. You ever you, holy basil? You ever have that before? It's got yep. like holy fuck. This stuff has yep. like a brilliant aroma, brilliant smell to it. But I like I don't know what to do with it yet. I'm like I'm not chef, gonna chef it. I don't know. I think it's like it's more. There's something else I can do with this. But I have no idea. Yeah. What, 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 holy what, coastal grown. Like what, what's up? That's a fun one. I do the African blue. That that one comes back for me all the time. It's pretty. It's like a more perennial basil, you know, it gets more tall. Um, that's the one that just grows here all the time. So I don't, I don't usually, you know, every once in a while I'll buy a basil plant from the store, like, you know, that living basil plant, you know, for stuff. And then I'll just, I'll use what I need for whatever I bought it for. And then I'll clone it and then I'll pot what was there. And then I'll cut off the, the heads and make clones out of it. Cause they root in like five days in water. And then, uh, I've got basil for however long until it gets cold and I'll use those basils until they die. But that African blue always comes back and is always tough. And it's a good one. I like that one. What, what were you trying to say there? Coastal grown. Okay. Uh, back on the sugar cane thing. My family is uh, originally from Puerto Rico. Uh, back from like 1754, they were given land by the king of Spain on the western half, like most of it, and uh, they had a ton of sugarcane plantations. And um, it's funny that like y'all mentioned that because it's like eventually in the 1900s, when uh, uh, they had the uh, anti-alcohol uh, laws, what they resorted to was having to make rum with the damn um sugar cane but then like it's funny as shit because then they look at me like i'm a fucking alien about like we and it's just hilarious 
Because it's like, like you know, is the pot like on the kettle black or what's going on here? But um, yeah, I just I we, I, 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 I even I learned how to fuck you for smoking weed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and I was involved in making uh, moonshine back in the day, even too. I used to do that stuff as well, but like I uh, I just. I don't understand how someone could say alcohol is better than weed when weeds never caused anyone any harm. But uh, yeah, I just thought that was a funny thing that to, to mention. It was like, yeah, oh yeah, I, I've I've grown uh, sugar cane before, and and like Tyler said, it does not eat any nutrients. It's really you just throw it in a pot with some soil, let it go with water, and it does its thing, and it just goes and goes and goes. And it looks like basically bamboo. It's just the grass. It just proliferates. Um, but yeah, that was that was my little rant about uh, sugar cane and all that. Yeah, that's one of my old. You know, you got to plant plants that are going to be useful to you. I've got like timber bamboo on one side so that you know if i ever need timber we got timber bamboo growing you know i got sugar cane you can do a lot of things with sugar cane you know i've got a lot of plants that are like that um in my place you know so like like survival plants right like plants that yeah. every human being should have yeah man kind of yeah somewhere yeah Absolutely. Wait, can you wait? No is timber bamboo what I'm thinking it is? Like timber bamboo is the type of bamboo used for building, right? Like that's the it's like a really yeah, it's big style. ass bamboo that have shoots that are like you know tree shoots like that. And there's there's one the one that I have is called old hamai, and uh, old hamai, yeah, and that's a killer one. It's a golden bamboo because it's big ass, you know, big ass, you know, shoots on it. There's other things, but timber bamboo is just heavy duty. Tough, thick bamboo that is, that is used for building structures in many countries and is a building material in lots of things, which is cool. So it's a useful, a useful plant. You know, they can go like 55, 60, you know, I don't know exactly how, just somewhere like 50 feet tall, somewhere in there. Um, tall and be just, yeah, it's bitching. It's pretty cool. It's like you're growing these big 60 foot friggin' poles, you know what I mean? That you can just hack down and use for whatever, you know? It's pretty cool. <laughs> so that would be the one they use for scaffolding that you see in the, the Orient where they build the big scaffolding out of it. That'd be the, the yep. tree bamboo one. Yep. Oh, that's it. Okay. okay. Well, it is almost nine o'clock. I've realized now that I have promised to read my daughter a bedtime story. Yes. And it's and it's it's like an hour past her bedtime and she's used it as now a BS excuse to stay the fuck up. So I'm like really, Oh yeah, good one, good one. Really like fuck you. Like you're a smart fucking yep. pain in the ass. Um but we are actually pretty close to the two hour mark. Um just a second, I'm gonna tell her I'm on my way. Got to keep the girls happy, London. I, I'm surrounded by them, so yes. There's there's more women around me than men. It's me and <laughs> three girls. It's absolutely exhausting. I love them to death. But we are going to be back. So in two weeks, yeah. we're going to have clones. Um, and we should be able to up pot. Um, so I'll probably go straight into eight. Uh, and then I should have some plants sexed by then. We should be... I don't know if Coriel will you be cutting then? Uh, I yeah probably by then or then yes. Cool, cool, cool. And what about you, Coastal? Are you going to be cutting by then? You be taking cut? I am holding out as hard as I can, so I can get as much biomass as I can off. I'm literally just like sitting here, like stubborn. Stubborn headed, just like okay, they're ready to go into flowering. They're gonna be ten feet tall indoors, and I'm just like okay, fuck, okay. I'm just like, so I'm oh yeah, I'm I'm probably gonna have to cut them in the next week or so, but I'm holding off as much as I can. I love that. That's awesome. So 
Just as a reminder to everybody, you can catch Mr. Trees' all of his seeds, including the stuff that we're running in this show in the description. I've got the right at the very, very top of the description is is Mr. Seeds Trees. Mr. Trees Seeds. I always fuck that up every fucking time. Um, and every single well, we're bi weekly Saturdays um, where we're going to keep going through everything. We we'll should have flowering plants soon. We've been we've been going hard for a while. We planted lots of seeds, um, and I plant and I expect for some really fun shit to happen. It's it's been a wildly good time. We've had some amazing introspective conversations. I have you as a special guest on Tuesday at the Dank Hour, which I'm excited yep. for, which is going to be great. That will be our breeder episode. So tune in for that one because we're doing a. Every every six or eight weeks, we do a breeder episode where we run through like a new step of the breeder. So Mr. Treach will get a heads up. We're going to be talking, and usually, usually the experts don't get a heads up. I like to just throw them in and tell them like whatever the fuck we're going to talk about it. Last we started off last week's conversation with Acta asking Doctor Mark Saldone um, if there was a specific terpene that he's managed to isolate or find or discover that makes people particularly passionate about the Grateful Dead. And he actually answered it really well. Um, so <laughs> apparently there might be. Um, and he's still wow. looking for it, which is crazy. I have no idea that would actually be the answer. It was sarcasm when it comes down to it. But regardless, um, so we're gonna be we're gonna be going through kind of like selection stage and then like how do you breed how how do you start selecting pollen donors and and, and making that selection for it there too. So That'll be part two of the Dank Hour Breeder Series, which will be great and and a lot of fun. Um, Anyways, does anybody have anything else exciting that they want to mention that's coming up? I just have my show coming up on Monday. Uh, We're missing John Verfello again. He's in choruses, um, but it's going to be an open Q&A with with myself. uh, So anybody can ask anything on anything they want to know about me or how I grow. Cool. So tune in on Monday. What time is that at, Ken? Uh, that's at uh, 10 o'clock uh, PST, 11 o'clock uh, Mountain Standard. Awesome. And that would be on Monday on channel one or two? On uh, number two. On channel two. So make sure to tune in for that one, everybody. And then let me know, Mr. Trees, if you need any help doing the show. Because I would I'd love to see see any of that garden happening. At any point, you got Peter right next to you though, so he's he's got dips. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do it exactly, but yeah, I'm gonna need help doing doing it. I think we're gonna do a show with something fun. So awesome! I just found yeah, out so. about this unicorn cup up here. Apparently, there's a, a cannabis competition up here. I might be entering, so I'm like excited. Oh, there sweet. might be some cool names. Some cool names, yeah, but there'll be yeah. more details on that coming up. I just spoke to them recently. So, but anyways. I am going to push end broadcast now, or we're going to continue the conversation 